Cuba, and I'm uh, I'm working for IBM as a as a software sales leader for Middle East and Pakistan. So I'm responsible for the platform for the public cloud platform uh, uh, of IBM called Softlayer, which is purely infrastructure as a service. Uh, today I'm in the room with uh, my colleagues from VMware and Ingram Micro, and uh, we would like to to talk to you about the the partnership and alliance we formed all together um, in order to to extend on-premise on, on premise VMware environments into, into the, the uh, IBM uh, software clouds and how to help you to build a seamlessly uh, hybrid cloud using a traditional native VMware technologies. Okay, so the, the agenda for today's uh, for today's uh, for today's call for today's uh, webinar uh, is we're gonna start from uh, from IBM uh, Softlayer Cloud overview. I'm gonna tell you a bit more about uh, what is what is Softlayer, uh, how is how is it positioned uh, in inside IBM as a product. Uh, I, I'll tell you also a bit about the VMware and Softlayer partnership, which has been announced at the beginning of the year. And then I'll pass my voice to, to my colleagues from VMware uh, who will tell you everything about the solutioning uh, of, of VMware hybrid uh, clouds uh, and connecting the soft layer environment to the, to the data centers you operate for your customers uh, on-prem. The reason we, we're talking about the hybrid cloud today is actually uh, just because our customers are talking about the hybrid cloud. So uh, most probably most of you were, were already into conversation with customer when customer mentioned hybrid cloud. Uh, they still want to have a data center on-prem. They would like you to, to sell them uh, VMware hardware and, and build a solution on-premise. But they're looking for a, for a cost-saving options. They're looking uh, more into, into, into uh, cloud solutions just because this is something which is very, very hot on the market at the moment. And they they basically thinking about how to transition and how to, how to move at least some of the less uh, critical workloads uh, to, to the cloud. Actually, our research shows that 70% seven, of our customers are already adopting or already adopted hybrid cloud. And of course, the key uh, important thing for us, and I'm, I'm talking both about uh, uh, IBM uh, and, and our colleagues from VMware, is basically to, 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 to provide an end-to-end -end solution for you, which, uh, which, will, in, which will include uh, components both from uh, on-prem uh, uh, environment perspective, which means like a traditional software and hardware stack to, to, to be built inside your data centers, as well as extend you, help you to extend into, into the public cloud. Uh, but of course, uh, some of your customers, uh, they already aware about the cloud, just because uh, if you are in discussions with your customers, they, they, they mentioning, yes, we would like to move into, into a public cloud, they, they mentioning most probably AWS or, or maybe Azure. But of course, if they have a VMware stack on uh, on premise, they 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 facing a challenges just because they keep asking questions. How are we gonna integrate the new public cloud platform with with an existing VMware environment? How are we gonna build uh, uh, how are we gonna build a solution which is uh, which is uh, simple, uh, effective, and and brings all the uh, all the all the public cloud benefits to us, uh, which means that it helps us to reduce the cost improve elasticity and scalability of our, our solution. So the, the, the major challenges uh, for, for, for the customer shifting into, into infrastructure as a service provided by, by the major public cloud vendors are, are basically in elastic consumption, uh, heterogeneous tools, uh, complex networking problems, I mean how to integrate the network uh, and, and make, it, make it happen, make it, make it easy for, for, for our environment. Uh, how to authenticate seamlessly uh, the uh, the assets we have uh, we have provided from the from the public cloud? How to ensure the governance uh, is in place and and the security standards are 
are exactly the same as as as, uh, as on our on-prem environment. So IBM came 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 to the uh, came to the alliance with VMware, and we announced together uh, at the beginning of the year a big global alliance uh, in to 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 deliver to our customers a hybrid cloud, fully flexible hybrid cloud solution. Which can be, uh, which can, which can allow you as a business partners and your customers to seamlessly build and expand the VMware solutions into into a infrastructure as a service on IBM uh, on IBM Cloud. So, um, partnership was announced at the, at the at the beginning of the year, and uh, I would like to say that uh, until now, uh, the the topic, especially. Uh, uh, the topic become very, became very hot uh, across our customer base and customer sets. So we got a lot of response from our customers. They are really interested into into bursting VMware into the into the cloud with IBM. We we successfully closed many projects, uh, especially here in the region. I'm not sure if you if you've heard about the Etihad project, which is worth 700 million dollars. Uh, a soft layer uh, and the VMware solution is, is a major component of this project and actually is a foundation platform for a cloud expansion for Etihad at the moment. Uh, and this, this all happens because, uh, because the way we took with VMware and the, the way we decided to follow up together with VMware gives you extreme elasticity uh, in terms of uh, expanding the, 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 the technology you currently know and you currently aware of in, in, into the public cloud without the major disruptions for, for your customers, for their workloads and environments. Uh, the way we the way we approach the the, uh, the hybrid cloud solutions with VMware is actually uh, very very uh, simple. Uh, VMware uh, we build with VMware a joint business uh, business uh, business model, uh, and uh, we actually agreed that we're gonna bring all most of the most of the most important licenses VMware offers to you on premise into into the software cloud. So. The, from a from a management from a solutioning perspective, if you're already VMware partners, uh, you won't see a big differences uh, from the uh, from the way you see uh, you see your solutions from uh, on uh, on deployed on the public cloud. So the full we ensure that the the solution will be fully consistent on the management layer. Uh, the, there, are, there are software components which are very familiar to you, which is uh, SDDC, uh, which is uh, vCenter, ESX. Uh, the, all, all those licenses are available from, from SoftLayer Cloud. Solution is also a seamless uh, from a networking and security model, uh, just because uh, we, use, uh, we use the concept when we extend the NSX licenses to the cloud, so we can, you can build a very, very easy um, network uh, network solution for your customer, which spans across uh, multiple data centers, uh, including this uh, the data center you have on prem as well as as IBM Software Cloud data centers, and and actually migrate your workloads and 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 the virtual machines seamlessly without without even shutting them down. Solution is also very flexible from a cost perspective, just because the licenses are service so. Um, the way it works from a from a software side, uh, all the licenses are uh, are provided uh, in in a, as a service model when 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 you pay for them only uh, a monthly fee instead of buying them uh, as you as you currently do on prem. So this is those are the major benefits of of, of having VMware part of IBM Cloud. Let me tell you a bit more about the software uh, before we before we jump to the solutioning of, of, of the VMware uh, of the VMware cloud uh, uh, cloud stack. So, software is actually uh, IBM's choice for the for the public cloud platform, and uh, IBM acquired software in 2013. At that time, that point in time, the company uh, was a global rich infrastructure as a service uh, provider. Um, giving their customers the uh, uh, compute, uh, compute, uh, network, and, and storage uh, capacity from from the cloud, from across 11 data centers around the world. 
Since the time of acquisition, IBM invested uh, more than $1 billion in software, and currently uh, we can provide a VMware solutions from over 45 global cloud data centers. So what you can see on the, on the, on the, ma on the map is actually our geographic, uh, geographical coverage, global geographical coverage. We have uh, 45 data centers. Uh, we can provide a VMware uh, solutions from all of them. So they 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 actually available from you even now if you log on to this uh, onto 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 a software platform and create your account. The the VMware licenses are already there, so you can you can seamlessly provision them and and start building a uh, your solution um, immediately. Um, our data centers are actually connected together using a secure high speed network, uh, which is a multiple. Uh, which is a multiple 10 GB uplinks uh, network, and you can use this network in the price of your of your VMware solution. So there is no additional charges uh, charges uh, for for the network. Another another uh, a big differentiator just because uh, no such a cloud provider across across uh, across the globe. I'm I'm mainly talking about AWS and Azure. They don't have a solution like that just because. They don't provide a bare metal server. They don't uh, provide a private cloud solutions uh, as we do with VMware, and they don't uh, they don't have the data centers connected using a uh, using a private private network, which is free of charge. We have some questions coming up. Okay. Well, we don't see those questions immediately, so thank you for that. Okay, there is a question uh, about the, the CPU-based pricing. I will, uh, and of course, how how is it uh, how is it calculated? So uh, the answer for that is, of course, I, I have an additional slide for this, and I'll show you the first of all the, the list of all the licenses available from from IBM Software Cloud. The second of all, uh, yeah, uh, to answer to your question is uh, uh, the the licenses are available per physical CPU socket. And uh, and the VMware solution on top of software is using the private cloud component, which is available from software. Uh, software is of course public cloud uh, infrastructure as a service, but one of the main differentiators is that we can offer to our customers private clouds, and we can help uh, our customers to build a dedicated environments. And this is actually part we we address together with VMware. So we offer our license as a service from bare metal servers which have a physical CPUs which are entirely owned by the uh, by the um, by the partner or by the end customer and the VMware license uh, is priced per CPU used uh, within the solution. Is this the only question or we have some some other questions? I look now, these are the only questions. Point, there is a point of presence in UAE question. Is there a point of presence here? Yes, so the question is uh, if we can go back to the, to, to the, to the map. Uh, there is a question if there is a point of presence, if we, have a, uh, if we already have something in, 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 in UAE or in the Middle East uh, region. The answer is uh, no. Mm, the answer is actually uh, the same as, as for the other public cloud vendors, just because uh, neither Azure and AWS are our biggest competitors. They they not yet deployed in here. I can only say, and uh, this is ob obviously uh, uh, just informational, that all vendors are planning to deploy uh, data centers here in the nearest future. We 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 also, and of course, uh, but I cannot I cannot share any any other details about this. Yes. So if we if we considering the the connection uh, the the data centers uh, connection to 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 UAE customers, uh, 
Uh, I can answer, for example, uh, I can give you an example of Etihad project. Etihad project is using data centers in Europe. Uh, the aver uh, average latency is in between 100 milliseconds uh, to 120 milliseconds, um, which uh, which uh, which which is suitable for most of the van uh, van replications, uh, um, which are which are recommended here in the case of uh, of of a, of a replication over van. So um, so the the closest one from a latency perspective and the most recommended ones are at the moment data centers in Europe. However, we already have a customers deploying resources in India. We have a data center in Chennai, and uh, the latency wise, uh, there is a, there is a, the latency should be similar, if not if not better than the than the European one. Uh, we have a question saying, does IBM has such point of contact with Equinix. Yes, I mean, uh, just, uh, yeah, I mean, the question is actually the Azure has a pop, uh, point of presence in Equinix. I mean, we do have a partnership with, uh, with, uh, with a telcos here in the, in the region, and those telco providers are giving us, are giving us also a pop extension uh, to, to our data center network, and it's also based in Equinix. Uh, this is not the solution is not branded by us, but it's branded by one of the of the of the telcos, uh, and actually we're working on the on the two or, or three more partnerships. Uh, so the uh, I would say that we already have a pop a pop in not not the pod which is data center, but point of presence which is network extension connection offered by one of our telco partners from a Equinix location in 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 Dubai. So coming back to, to I think this is all those are those are all the questions uh, so far. So I'm gonna go back to 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 my presentation and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, I mean SoftLayer has a has a very broad service catalog which doesn't really focus on bare metal servers. We we have a public cloud VSI, we have private nodes, we have uh, backup as a service products, we have uh, load balancers, firewalls, and and all the all the components available as a all the infrastructure components available as a as a service from our from our cloud, but of course from um, from a unique value uh, value uh, perspective uh, we we offering to VMware the most important the most unique uh, component is actually ability to to deploy and deliver a private cloud from a publicly uh, available data center. So uh, I mentioned we do have 45 data centers across the world and we deploy the VMware solution in all of them. So uh, with VMware we, we have capability now to, to, to deploy a, a fully isolated private cloud uh, inside, uh, inside, uh, inside our data center with a VMware licenses delivered as a service and basically build or extend your uh, your on prem environments into 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 a hybrid mode by offering by offering additional compute and additional capacity uh, from from software data centers so this is this is the biggest this is the biggest advantage this is the biggest uniqueness we we can offer as ibm uh, what 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 the, what's worth to to be added here? I mean, uh, those solutions can be still integrated with a cheap infrastructure as a service public cloud components available from our data centers. So you can have a private cloud, but you can also extend this private cloud and and start using a, a public cloud components just to make uh, uh, just to make the solution more cost, even more cost efficient. So those are like additional benefits you can you can have. Um, my colleagues from VMware will explain in a very detailed way how to build those solutions. We 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 actually uh, we picked up like a free, the most useful, the most uh, popular scenarios use use cases uh, we we have actually with uh, VMware on our IBM software cloud, and those use cases will be detail uh, will be um, will be very very detailed uh, they will be described very detailed way by by VMware by by our VMware colleagues. colleagues. Um, how do how does VMware partnership looks from a cost perspective? We we run a couple of TCO and uh, and uh, business case, the use cases for for the solutions, uh, trying to compare the cost of and the, the savings you can have by by moving the um, the solutions from on-prem 
to, uh, to, to solve their public cloud. Of course, every solution will be different just because, you know, you have a different costs uh, uh, or cost in, inside your data centers, different hardware which costed you uh, different money and different assets operating, uh, operating the data center. But the basic calculation shows that, uh, you know, by moving workloads to, 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 uh, to the VMware cloud on software, I mean, to the, to the, to the IBM software cloud uh, powered by VMware, you can get from 20 to 35% uh, savings TC over, uh, over a couple of years. Uh, this, is, this, 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 uh, this particular use case were, was calculated based on a three years assumption. But of course, uh, uh, though this is this is the approximate range of, of savings your customers can have by, by moving workloads to to the VMware uh, cloud with IBM. I mentioned previously about the uh, hybrid use case scenarios. Uh, we we um, we jointly under the, uh, undertake with VMware and present to our customers. So we will talk uh, to you about the three of them today. Uh, disaster recovery and backup solution with IBM software, uh, VMware Cloud, capacity expansion, so the case when you have an on-prem data center and you're just moving um, the solutions to, to, to software, some workloads to the software VMware Cloud, uh, just, to, just, to, just to shift from CapEx to OpEx and, and bring some savings to the customer. There is also a third case which is called Dev and Test. Uh, which is mainly moving uh, all about to move less critical workloads and environments uh, to, to, to IBM Software Cloud. Uh, the licenses, there was a, one question about the licenses. So here we have like a, a full list of all the licenses which are available from, uh, from IBM uh, Software control, control Panel at the moment. I know just because I spoke with my VMware uh, counterpart today that there, there, there are some changes to the list and the list is now uh, potentially longer or will be longer soon so I, I, I hope we'll get some more information today from um, from our VMware colleagues but basically uh, the licenses available are based on the uh, vSphere Enterprise Plus suite, uh, suite and this is like a basic deployment so all the features from Enterprise Plus you can get on-prem you can get also on, on, on IBM Cloud uh, we also deliver vCenter, uh, uh, we also deliver vRealize which helps you to automate your cloud. Uh, there is an NSX, NSX uh, as, a, as, a, as a service component which allows you to, to, to seamlessly integrate your network with and extend your network from a data center you have on-prem into IBM clouds. Uh, we have also Virtual Sun, uh, SRM which is very helpful for disaster recovery uh, scenarios. And uh, and all those all those licenses are are uh, are already available from uh, from our cloud. The way you pay for the license is very simplified. You pay per CPU, physical CPU used, and uh, and the prices are publicly available on our portal. So if you go to the software or if you go to Ingram Micro, and ask about uh, the the pricing lists uh, for for the for the for the VMware licenses, you will get the full information. You will also get a consultancy just because we build a team inside Ingram uh, who's jointly taking care about IBM Cloud and, and VMware solutions and is, is already uh, capable to, to advise you and to, to guide you through, uh, through solutioning process and, and help you to, 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 to bring your customers to deliver the, 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 the hybrid cloud solutions to, to your customers. Right, Greg, since we are running over the licenses, we have a poll question which you can quickly run over. Uh -huh. I think my viewer colleague will help me with the, with the answer, <laughs> just because... No, no, he, right. no, no, I mean, All of this stands as it is, nothing changes here, we just add the cloud foundation. Yeah. So. so we can begin with how does the licensing on IBM Cloud work? Well, actually, I, uh, I already answered this question, and this question has been also asked by, by, by one of our partners. So this, the, licensing, the, the, the licensing model is actually uh, a very, very simple for you to, to, to embrace. First of all, all the features of the licenses available from Software Cloud are exactly the same as the licenses you, you buy on-prem. So it's actually the same the same set of features there is no hidden agenda here no like a cuts in the feature list uh, those licenses are exactly the same as on-prem licenses the second of all the paid 
per CPU per month. So you get the price, the price you can get from Ingram Micro is actually price per CPU, per license, per CPU paid per month for your customers. And this actually brings, uh, brings the VMware clouds on software into a fully OPEX mode, just because you can basically, uh, you can scale the cloud up and down, uh, up and down on a monthly basis, uh, basis, uh, basis uh, by adding and or removing resources from, uh, from your customer environment. And that's how you can manage the, the cost, the total cost of ownership for your customers and basically um, easily uh, manage the scal scalability of your solution. Uh, great. And we have the second one saying, do the licenses provided by IBM Cloud are different from on-prem licenses? And the answer is, uh, is only if we, if we discuss the business delivery model, just because the feature-wise, they are all the same. Uh, the the only thing which is different is how you pay for them. You pay for them per CPU, per month. So this is this is how is it priced, and this is the only difference from uh, from a licensing perspective. All right, great. So we have fifty percent saying features of licenses are same, yes. and we have thirty three percent saying license delivery model is different. Great. And I believe we have some questions as well. Is white labeling a possibility? Uh, yes, it is a possibility, and actually, it will be something which is uh, which will be offered together with Ingram Micro, just because Ingram Micro already have uh, uh, did white labeling of, of of our solution, and it's uh, it's already part of Ingram Micro Marketplace. As far as I uh, understand, uh, we, we, we already discussed that, you know, this white labeling will be also provided for you as a partner with a, with, a, with a customization option. So you can use the marketplace which Ingram Micro already has. And you can basically white label this in a very easy way. So you don't need to undertake any investments. You, you don't need to, to, to invest into DevOps project. It will be, uh, it will be available for you. Uh, in a very, very in a few very simple steps. So basically, you will add your logo. You will, you will change the layout of the of the of the marketplace. You will pick up the uh, the service catalog, which is available already on uh, on Ingram Micro, and you can easily build your own micro marketplace in a few clicks. Uh, there will be no need to 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 do additional investment. Great. And the next one says, can the customer offload storage only remote backup? I think it's possible. I think we can cover the answer for that just because question is 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 uh, is, uh, is technical, and uh, yeah, we'll discuss it uh, in a more detailed way uh, during our session, technical session with VMware with our VMware uh, cloud specialist who will cover that. Great. Next one says, how do you compare this offering against VCloud? This is also a very good question, but I would like the I would like the VMware guys to respond for that. I think the main reason is basically uh, that we can offer a fully isolated, fully dedicated stack for a customer, and vCloud is more like a multi-tenant uh, deployment. So we don't have like your individual vCenter solution, uh, but in here you can have a fully dedicated stack for for your customer. So there they might be a different use cases. And yeah, we, we, we also discussed it with VMware before and uh, before presenting it to you, uh, and basically decided uh, the the way we position our solution against vCloud, just because we expect we were expecting this question. So yes, I mean uh, there is no there is no uh, we yeah the solutions are not uh, cannibalizing themselves, and uh, and uh, they are they are slightly different offerings, and we'll explain it on the during technical session. And last one says, is there a minimum monthly commitment for the vCenter? Is there a minimum? No. I mean, uh, it, uh, the minimum monthly commitment will be based on the, on the, on the minimum architecture block you're going to deploy on, on, on software, which is mainly bare metal server with a VMware license. So if you decide to go for a, s a single server with uh, ESX without additional licenses deployed on the cloud, this will be your minimum commitment, and this will be a minimum commitment over one month. So you can resign from this uh, after one month, just because the way we the way we build the VMware solutions on IBM Cloud, we have uh, we have public cloud which is hourly based. Yeah, so you can deploy easily VSIs uh, uh, and pay for this hourly on hourly basis like AWS, like Azure. 
but uh, the private cloud is slightly different. So we, uh, in this business model, we made the assumption that the, the monthly commitment will be a minimum one, and this is how we drive this uh, these solutions with the customers. Yeah, I think it's time for for uh, to to pass to pass my voice to 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 my VMware colleagues. Uh, just to let you know that uh, yes, uh, the, I put some some uh, some useful links uh, for you uh, just just to be reviewed after after presentations. So we have a knowledge base about the VMware solutions. We have also uh, links on VMware websites, you know, describing how our solution works. So I I do believe the the deck will be shared and uh, and uh, you you you'll have a chance to to review and to get some more information about our solutions from, from the links. Thank you very much. I'm passing my voice to, to, to the VMware team. No more questions for him? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. There were a few for me which I can address later in my, you can just remind me please. If I sure. uh, they can... Just an update to the audience. We have the decks updated on the handout section. So you can download them while the presentation is going on. We have one question. Uh, all right. No, no, you have to scroll down, I think. No, it's, it's all the, oh, okay, that's the last one. Okay, okay guys, uh, everyone, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Zahul Alam. I'm a specialist systems engineer in uh, VMware's uh, cloud business unit. Uh, just uh, taking, uh, you know, st uh, starting from where Greg left off, uh, I want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, not so much about licensing, but more about how we, uh, how we, uh, how does the VMware technology uh, actually power the Cybernet Cloud, right? What's going on under the hood or what's going on under the covers? Right? Just for you to get an idea, uh, in terms of products, right, uh, we have, you know, the, the I, I'll tell you what, the, the four or five different uh, technologies that we use, right? Uh, they are bundled differently. Uh, sometimes you might hear the word we cloud. Sometimes you hear we realize. Uh, you tend to hear a lot of SDDC, like software defined data center, right? Uh, they, in the end, we are talking about uh, the same product set. It's just like different names uh, or different bundling, right? So if you have any questions or confusion on that, so please stop me and ask me. Uh, I'm going to introduce one more term today, one more name today. It's called the VMware Cloud Foundation, right? And I'm going to explain exactly what this is. And this is the latest announcement from VMware. Uh, and IBM. So, uh, at the beginning of this year, like Greg was saying, we we uh, you know we started. Uh, VMware has been with this for a few years now. We have been talking to our enterprise customers. Uh, we are looking at uh, you know uh, onboarding them onto public cloud, right? But we face a lot of challenges. Uh, it's not easy for our enterprise customers. Uh, existing vSphere customers especially to, to start using the public cloud, right, as they do on the on-prem. Uh, we have been working on this for several years now, uh, and in this, in, this, during this, uh, in this duration, we have come up with several, uh, you know, technologies uh, of how we can expand the public cloud. Now, in the beginning of the year, we started talking to IBM, and uh, one of the things that came out of that was this pure hybrid cloud model, which was not uh, possible before, right? I know someone, one, somebody asked just now about the vCloud Air. Uh, I'll ask, answer that up front uh, at the beginning, that uh, vCloud Air is a different offering from IBM uh, Cloud, because uh, VMware cloud, uh, VMware's Cloud Air is basically, you can't really have your own vCenter in the vCloud Air, right? What you are really renting are virtual machines. There are a different set of use cases uh, which VMware uh, via Cloud Air addresses, uh, but IBM Cloud doesn't really compete uh, with VCloud Air in that sense, right? Uh, we offer a complete um, uh, uh, a hybrid solution inside the uh, IBM Cloud, right? The other th reason we have uh, vCloud Air is that we are using it uh, primarily as a testing uh, bed for our technologies, right? So a lot of these new technologies that I'm going to show you today, they are first tried out in the in the vCloud Air, and then we roll them out to our weekend partners, the vCloud Air network partners, and IBM being the biggest week, uh, weekend partner, obviously, right? So that's where we, we kind of position vCloud Air with our weekend partners, right? So I don't necessarily see a conflict. Uh, I think they complement each other. So 
let me just, uh, you know, I think you need to click on that, yeah, okay. So let me just, you know, first uh, tell, tell you where we are coming from, right? Uh, so when we talk to our customers, uh, what we see normally, and we, you know, we, this is a regular discussion that we go through, is our customers are going to the cloud because of one primary reason, right, which is agility and speed, right? Contrary to what many believe, it's not to reduce cost or, or, or you know, to improve this. Other, other factors are important, but the most important driving factor is agility and speed because they want to go to market faster. They want to launch new services faster, right? Now, the reason they're doing that in the public cloud space and not their own is because the, their own data centers are extremely complex, right? The on-premise data centers are cannot be uh, uh, rewired very easily to onboard new technologies. I mean, they, you're running your uh, data center uh, with your monolithic and legacy applications, but when it comes to new services and new applications and microservices and third generation applications, right, on big data projects, et cetera, a lot of customers find that their IT and data centers are not capable uh, to respond, in, you know, to, to those, uh, those kind of challenges, right? And therefore they go out to the Public cloud. The challenge with public cloud is that the on-premise data centers they are used to very uh, high level of governance and control, right? Uh, which kind of doesn't exist in the in the public cloud, right? In public cloud, you have speed, but less control and less governance, right? From an enterprise customer's point of view. So this is the challenge that VMware has been facing for for many years. Because as you know, primarily VMware is an enterprise uh, customer. Our, our customer base is entirely enterprise, right? So our customers, when they want to onboard the public cloud, these are the kind of challenges that we were facing. So it's for the first time that you know with IBM we have been able to address some of those challenges. And uh, for the last several months, almost a year now, the IBM R&D team. Uh, and the VMware R&D team have been working very closely to come up with some validated architecture, validated designs, you know, that our customers can, you know, pick and deploy immediately. Uh, I will show you some of these architectures can take many weeks and months sometimes to deploy, but when you deploy them on the IBM cloud, you can sort of get, you know, do that in a matter of hours, right? So these solutions have been tested, have been validated, have been certified uh, right from the in the software stack down to the you know the physical servers they're running on physical storage network etc every component inside this this stack has been certified so my uh, my focus will be today on on primarily that discussion right so over the last few years uh, you know a lot of things have happened when we uh, we have tried to address you know this uh, this, these challenges, right? The demand for technologies that simplify infrastructure. So, for example, hyper-converge infrastructure, right? There's somewhere something that we have played a very big part in, right? Uh, uh, containerized applications, infrastructure as a service, network virtualization. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, right? All of these things have sort of, you know, uh, uh, come together to to give us this new hybrid solution, right? But when it comes to a customer today, an existing customer it is still very difficult for someone to build a private cloud or a hybrid cloud, right, uh, from scratch. Uh, a lot of professional services, a lot of time goes on to building these kind of uh, cloud. So this is where we kind of, you know, uh, we want to bring our cloud uh, uh, foundation. And the idea behind that is very simple. We want to enable our customers to deploy a software-defined data center platform, which has got the vSphere, the vSAN, the NSX uh, network virtualization software, in the same way that today you deploy a VM, which is in a matter of minutes, right, or a matter of seconds sometimes. We want to enable that, and we want them to do that for their on-premise uh, uh, data center, as well as something in the cloud, which is, in this case, IBM Cloud, right? As easy as this sounds, this is, in fact, a very complex problem, right? And uh, what I will now explain to you. So the idea behind this is that uh, I'm sure all of you, uh, you know, hear about web scale companies like Google and Amazon and, and Facebook and all, them, all of them, right? Uh, how can they uh, address, uh, you know, to customer demand so fast? How can they go out and provision resources in real time in a very quick fashion, right? So the idea, so the logic is very simple. They have completely virtualized the underlying hardware stack, right? So they can sort of use commodity x86 hardware. They can run on any storage. They can run on any IP network, right? The intelligence and the, is all in the software layer that sits above the hardware layer, right? 
we want to bring the same approach to a enterprise customer, right? We want the enterprise customers to be able to do exactly the same thing that Google does, right? Uh, you should be able to spin up new infrastructures uh, in, 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 at a very short, uh, you should be able to uh, optimize your use of the physical infrastructure and the need, right? And there should be no hooks uh, into the physical infrastructure, right? That's the idea behind the software defined data center, right? Uh, completely commoditized virtualized hardware infrastructure and then you have a layer of virtualization and this layer of virtualization is a data center wide virtualization layer, right? It's not just compute, it's also network, it's also storage, right? And then you can put your applications on top, whether they are, you know, the old style legacy monolithic applications or they are next generation applications, you know, microservices, etc. This is very simple. Once we have done this, we can expand uh, very easily. We can uh, roll up, as the demand increases, we can add more hardware, you know, without disrupting the virtualization and the application there. It's a, sort of a distributed computing model, right? Uh, this is the first time that something like this is actually possible for enterprise customers to avail as well, right? We have taken the same model and extended it to IBM Public Cloud, right? So software basically is nothing but an extension of your data center, right? Uh, once you have, you know, uh, once you start using IBM Cloud, uh, one of the data centers, for example, then it would look no different to you and your administrators as your own data center. The SDDC platform will seamlessly scale from your on-premise to, to, the, to the IBM Cloud software data center, right? And this is really the beauty of this solution. Uh, again, as simple as it looks, a lot of hard work and engineering effort has been put into making something like this possible, right? Uh, uh, thousands of hours of uh, research and development and automation has gone into uh, to make something because really we are, I think we are the only people in the whole world who can actually do this right now very seamlessly. And I'm going to talk a bit more about how it is different from some of the other cloud providers, right? Why we are different in the sense that this is not a one-way trip. I mean, we have bi-directional communication. It's not like you move a VM into the cloud and that's it, or you can create it in the cloud and that's it, you can't bring it back. It's a bi-directional communication. It's not a one-way trip for your applications. So, so how, how are we doing this, right? So until, until recently, uh, as Greg was saying, uh, you could deploy uh, uh, v, v center in the IBM cloud, okay? Uh, you could then uh, uh, create ESXi servers and you could create your VMs and then of course you could add other realized products uh, from VMware like realized operations manager, automation, log insight, uh, SRM, etc. right? And that's, that option is still available to you. The other thing, the, uh, the, 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 the latest thing that we have done which happened uh, in September of this year, uh, we announced it in the US uh, in VMworld 2016, is we have launched something called the VMware Cloud Foundation, okay? Uh, going forward, uh, this is the way that we, you know, this is our vision of how uh, customers would deploy our software, okay? Uh, whether it is on the on-premise cloud or, or a public cloud, right? So VMware Cloud Foundation is, the, uh, is one of the options that you will see in software now. So when you go and you sign up, you will see both options. You will see that you can deploy your individual vCenter servers and ESXi hosts, or you can opt for the VMware Cloud Foundation. And going, I think this in the future, at some point, this will be the only way that you can onboard this technology. So what exactly is VMware Cloud uh, Foundation, right? So basically, it's nothing but a bundle of vSphere, vCell, and NSX, right? These are three major components inside the VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, on top of that, we have added something called the SDDC Manager, okay? The SDDC Manager is the lifecycle uh, manager for the entire uh, software stack, right? And I'll tell you why. This is a, a major uh, shift in how we were deploying software on-premise and off-premise, right? And what is the value add of this SDDC Manager for our customers? Uh, this platform that we create is, a, again, a universal platform. Uh, you can run your native, uh, you know, your, your traditional uh, monolithic application natively on this platform, either on-premise or off-premise IBM Cloud. And you can also run you know, the next gen, the third generation applications in, uh, on, this, on the same platform. 
So for, as an example, uh, our customers, you know, today are running SAP, Oracle, SA, SAS application, just as an example, or SQL sort of Microsoft. These are what I call the, the traditional applications, which are kind of scale up applications, right? Uh, you, they are not distributed uh, applications. Uh, then on the other hand, we have a lot of customers, even, in the U, even here in UAE, who are very interested in, in, in this third generation applications. They are looking at Docker's uh, containerized applications. They are looking at OpenStack ready, you know, uh, uh, OpenStack uh, uh, CMP uh, on which they can deploy the applications. They are looking at uh, Cloud Foundry as the platform as a service solution. So the beauty of this uh, VMware Cloud Foundation is that no matter where your customer is, okay, if uh, they can avail these uh, different uh, methodologies, they can adopt and deploy uh, these traditional applications and next applications on the same cloud, right? And then they can extend this out onto the, into the public cloud. The advantage of you doing VMware Cloud Foundation with IBM is that there is no learning curve for the enterprise IT or virtual infrastructure administrator, right? It's the same software, exactly the same software. There's no difference. It's not a special edition of the vSphere or other products, the same products. Uh, it, it, once you've created this account in IBM and you've extended your data center, you know, network and the, the platform, it will simply appear as just another cluster and data center in your vCenter. That's how seamless this is, right? So again, as I was saying before, uh, this, this, this is unique in the sense that uh, our idea was not to manage your VMs in the public cloud by creating them there, because those VMs, once we know that if you create a VM in, uh, for example, Amazon, it will live there, it will die there, right? There's no really easy way of bringing those VMs back into your data center. Our customers telling us that that's not necessarily what they want to do, right? Uh, they want to cloud burst. They want to be able to go and move their VMs uh, for DR purposes to the public cloud. They want to be able to bring them back at some point. They want to be able to replicate in both, right? And in case of disaster, they may even want to run the public cloud as primary for some time. Uh, there are examples of some customers I've spoken to who don't have a DR and they're looking at this, at having IBM Cloud as a DR data center, right? Uh, so these are the options that you know, we can give you out of the box today with the with software, IBM Cloud, uh, that none of the other public cloud providers can give you. Uh, the reason is very simple. It's, it's because we are hosting, our, our customers are hosting the vCenters in the cloud, right? And that's the primary difference. Uh, this is how we can enable you to use uh, NSX to extend your network layer to extension. This is how we enable you to start using SRM for site recovery manager. Uh, this is how we can use technologies like vMotion, right? If you can keep the time down to 100 milliseconds of latency, then you can even move the virtual machines back and forth, okay, uh, between IBM data center and, and the on-premise uh, uh, data center. So this, these things are very appealing, and in fact, these things have happened because our customers have asked us uh, this, you know, this is a direct result of the customer demand. Yeah, I'm sorry, there are a couple of questions which we have coming in. So okay, we'll... you want to, okay, sure, I can answer them now. Uh, the first one says, what is required for sign up to IBM software? What is required in the sense of... Okay, so, uh, well, Ingram Micro already has uh, an access to, to and created a marketplace with a software available, which is available for you. So, what's required for sign up is basically uh, to get in touch with the, with the, uh, with the cloud team uh, of Ingram Micro. And the cloud team of Ingram Micro will create a sub account for you uh, with an appropriate discount, and this is um, this is actually the 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 the, the, the benefit for you, uh, just because you know if you go directly to software and create something directly, you won't benefit from any discounts and, and support just because it's purely infrastructure as a service. So Ingram Micro gives you first of all solutioning capabilities and. Uh, they have a team of experts be willing to, to advise you regarding the, how to use it. They also provide you with, uh, let's say, additional discounts uh, and uh, for your accounts and the support for your accounts. So the answer for that question is get in touch with uh, Ingram Micro Cloud team and they'll, they'll, they'll run the, 
they'll open the, the, the account for you and they'll give the account, uh, they'll let you start using it. Alright, the next one says, when deploying the VMware solution on software, do the admins have to re-implement everything from scratch? Sorry, uh, can you, I can't read this properly. When deploying the VMware solution on yeah. software, yeah. Yeah. do the admins have to re-implement everything from scratch? Yeah, so uh, so this is the this is where the the answer is. Okay, first I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to tell you why it's not so bad. Okay, uh, because uh, what you're going to do is uh, you uh, you are going to deploy the VMware uh, Cloud Foundation, right? And deploying the VMware Cloud Foundation is is not something that I mean it's not like you're deploying vCenter and all the individual products one by one, right? The Cloud Foundation is a bundle of, of, of three major products, uh, vSphere, NSX, vSAN, and it has an SEGC manager, right? So when you go and select this in software, uh, then it's, the IBM Cloud driver will automatically deploy this for you. So this is a, this forms infrastructure, and I'll show that to you in, in, in another graphic very soon. Uh, what you need to do is obviously to create your VMs. That's what you do from scratch. Uh, or you can move your VMs from your on-premise data center or you can copy them, right? Uh, you can export them, you can re-motion them, uh, depending on your link, etc. These are the different options that you have available to you. So your applications need to be deployed on top of this uh, infrastructure. The infrastructure deployment is fully automated. So that's the answer to the question. All right, uh, the next one says, can you please elaborate on the proposition between vCloud Air and VM Foundation and IBM? So, uh, what is the question, sorry? Can you please elaborate on the proposition between vCloud Air and uh, VMware? Okay, so again, uh, to, to be more specific, vCloud Air is uh, very similar to you know something like Amazon, right? And when you go and you sign up for vCloud Air, what you're really getting is a, is a bunch of VMs at the end, right? Uh, we have capabilities in VM uh, vCloud Air where you can move uh, you know VMs back and forth, etc. We can replicate, but it's not the same as having a true hybrid cloud, right, that we have with IBM. The true hybrid cloud for VMware means that the administrator is managing a vCenter, complete vCenter environment in the public cloud as well. This is the primary difference between vCloud Air and IBM, okay, IBM Cloud. Uh, we don't intend to uh, run uh, vCenters inside the vCloud Air in the near future. Uh, in fact, what is running inside vCloud Air right now is a vCloud director. It's a multi-tenant solution for service providers. The intent behind that, when we created it, was uh, obviously at, at a few years ago, we were entering the public cloud space ourselves as well, and that's when it was created, right? But in the last uh, year or so, when we signed up with a partners with IBM, and we have a very, as you know, we have a very, very large uh, network of service providers who are part of the vCAN program, the vCloud Air network program, so we don't intend to, com just like we don't compete with any of the other, you know, VCAN partners, we don't intend to compete with IBM in this space, right? Uh, the, I can tell you from VMware perspective, our R&D and engineering perspective is very simple. Uh, we are launching a lot of new initiatives and technologies. We, uh, we uh, Cloud Foundation is one of them, right? Uh, so we, have, we test these things inside the cloud for, in, in vCloud Air first, right? A lot of them is, are not even visible to end users or service providers. Uh, so it's, it's like a testing bed for us, right, for technologies and new products and tech reviews, et cetera, before we launch them to the weekend uh, wholesale, right? So we, we can, we're going to continue development on vCloud Air, uh, primarily as a, recent, a research and development uh, engine for us. Uh, but the offering uh, in, with IBM is very clear. It's a true hybrid model. Okay, uh, it's Greg here uh, from IBM. So let me add a few words to, 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 um, to what uh, Zohar just said. Uh, so, yeah, as, as, as Zohar mentioned, it's, it's the major difference is uh, vCloud Air is a multi-tenant solution and, uh, and, uh, um, and the IBM software cloud, in this case, offers you a fully dedicated stack. What it means in terms of uh, solution design and, and uh, what it means for the customer in in more detailed way is basically if you go to, to, to IBM software, you basically, the way you design the data center is exactly the same way as you design the data center on-prem. So you're choosing ESX uh, components, you're choosing a network components, you're choosing security components, you, you, you're bringing your own vCenter and an uh, entire stack you build on top of software is actually not the public cloud, 
is a fully private cloud which is dedicated for, for your customer, right? Uh, vCloud Air is more like a multi-tenant solution, which means that the, the VMs you create on vCloud Air are managed for all of the customers by, uh, by a vCenter, let's say one, but of course there is more, but uh, let's say one vCenter. And it's, of course, it's something you cannot control. You cannot synchronize uh, with, um, with, uh, with, your, with, your, with your cloud at the same level as you do with a single instant, uh, instance of vCenter. And, uh, and multi-tenancy also means that, uh, you know, the whole virtualization concept is based on overcommitment, right? So you might have on the, on the ESX nodes and uh, basically uh, you know, if you compare it to the private cloud, when you fully control the performance, just because you're choosing a server with a CPU's uh, dedicated model, it's the whole server is entirely yours. In multi-tenant solution, you can also you can always face a situation when you have a noisy neighbors, which means on the same ESX clusters, you have the other customers running extensive operations, so consuming more performance than. Uh, than, uh, than, than you might require, which means, uh, which might go down with the performance. But this is typical situation for multi-tenancy, and this is also available, I mean, this kind of multi-tenancy is also available uh, on software AWS and Azure. So, so I hope this clarifies the question, and uh, the answer in, in a nutshell is dedicated versus multi-tenant. That's, that's, that's what the major difference is. Okay. Maybe I can. Maybe I'll be answering some of them during my. Uh, okay. So All right. No worries. I think you can. Yeah. You can go ahead. Okay. Let me go ahead because I think they, I, I'll, maybe some of them will get answered now shortly. Okay. So when we uh, we work with IBM, uh, you know, uh, on coming up with the use cases, IBM went and polled their customers, and we went and polled our customers, and. Uh, we sort of came up with two sets of you know, uh, key use cases, right? One were, one were purely infrastructure-based, uh, like disaster recovery services uh, at an infrastructure level, uh, data protection services, uh, advanced networking services, which is basically extending your on-premise uh, cloud so you can bring your own IPs into, into the uh, public cloud. Uh, these were the three, uh, and the, the use cases that came out were like data set extension. A lot of customers were interested in in, in, in elasticity, right, in extending the data centers so they can have this two-way app portability for their applications. The other thing was a data center replacement consolidation, right? Uh, you're moving or migrating and you need a, a, a replacement data center. The smaller customers uh, have uh, or have started contemplating moving to this model completely, right? So to completely replace uh, the data centers. The third, the most popular one it was obviously disaster recovery, right? A lot of customers do not have uh, you know, full-fledged data centers or second data centers in different uh, cities or countries. And this is the most popular one that, that, that came out among all the polls that both IBM and VMware did. Apart from this, there were some, a couple of other things, right? Uh, some of them, like desktop service was one thing that came up uh, many times uh, from a lot of customers, uh, especially for some of them who uh, want, you know, like uh, advanced GPU capabilities in the hosted environments. This is one of the things that is, you're going to see some announcements very soon uh, from IBM and VMware in this space, right? So you, can pro you, you will have Horizon as a service uh, with essentially end user computing. And, uh, the, and, in, and increasingly, uh, some of the advanced customers who have, a large, who have large development teams and DevOps operations, uh, they are exploring how they can uh, onboard the container technology and, and integrate containers uh, from VMware uh, looking at microservices, how, how they can, you know, start deploying OpenStack. So these are, the, uh, are some of the things that, you know, uh, that also were part of the uh, regional polling, but mostly pop more popular in the U.S. and, and the West, right? In, 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 in Middle East, we did not see much of this, right? So these were the four or five different key use cases that we identified uh, for the, uh, IBM Cloud. You want to say something? Well, I just wanted to mention that uh, the GPU uh, NVIDIA cards are yeah. already uh, part of software solutions. So yeah. now the, the final tests are all about to integrate Horizon exactly. and launch it. Yeah. So we already the, the, we are we are already prepared from IBM side to to to, de uh, to to deploy Horizon as a service. Yes. 
So FTC manager, right? So uh, what is the news thing, right? Uh, from from VMware, uh, FTC manager really. Uh, Anybody who has deployed uh, VMware solutions will tell you that you know when you take ESXi and NSX and vSAN and all the all the products which layer on top of uh, of this platform, which is like realized operations, automation, log inside, etc. These are you know complex technologies, complex products. When you deploy them on premise, uh, this is sort of a rough estimate of what you know how long it will take you to do this, right? Just uh, NSX, vSphere, vSAN. From the from the very beginning, from architecture phase to the complete uh, you know environment queue and validation, can take almost 90 days for deploying. Right? Uh, VMware and IBM teams uh, we created these validated architectures, and when we ran through them manually, this is it was still taking us you know three uh, to four weeks. And uh, keep in mind that these are highly skilled engineers from IBM and VMware who have at least many, many years of experience uh, of deploying such solutions, right? So when we look at our customer base, we, we immediately knew that, you know, we had to fix this thing. And we and the, and the way we have addressed it is through Cloud Foundation, right, and the SDC manager. So in our test, we can see that, you know, uh, if you took the validator architecture, you would be able to deploy it in like four or five days. When you launch it on IBM, uh, one, uh, IBM Cloud, it will tell you that it will take up to like 12 hours to deploy the whole stack. In many cases, it's like within six hours you have a complete VCloud foundation deployed on the IBM Cloud, right? Yes, I mean, what, what I would like to add from, from IBM side, I mean, this is something very, really important and uh, some of our customers, especially here in the region, they appreciate this, this kind of solution uh, very much just because, you know, when you, when you, when you get the, the login credentials for Softlake Cloud from, from Ingram Micro, I mean, you should be able to immediately deploy the the the, um, the, the the full technology stack, and it usually takes us up to a few hours uh, with a skilled uh, VMware uh, engineers to fit, to finalize a complete setup of a small uh, uh, v, uh, v Center uh, environment with two or three bare metal servers being a hypervisors underneath. So you can have a V Center cloud. A vCenter or SDDC uh, managed manage cloud being operational within uh, hours, I would say, not not weeks, as as uh, as we consider it uh, typically traditional way, uh, including like a hardware uh, purchase and provisioning, uh, configuration in your data centers, and 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 uh, and all all uh, all the related projects to that, like a networking projects and and the other ones. So. Some of the customers uh, might be really in a need, uh, and uh, this is just to highlight that the time is essential here, and it refers to the agility slide uh, yes. mentioned by the by, by Zahar at the very beginning. It's 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 critical. Yeah. So uh, so the, the the key point on in this is that you know our customers, the way we see this is uh, they'll be able to deploy the cloud foundation on their own premise. If let's say there is a greenfield customer. He can deploy the cloud foundation on his on-premise uh, in data center, and then he can go ahead and you know request the same uh, uh, stack from IBM. Uh, SGDC manager is really the piece which is taking the complexity out of the configuration uh, of deploying the different VMware products, right? So if you look at SGDC manager, what are some of the capabilities or what it is doing? It's, 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 it's doing the initial imaging, uh, it's, it's doing the, the free replaceable units management, it's doing the complete end-to-end -end monitoring of the entire solution, right? Uh, the two or three things that have come up uh, from our customer polling, uh, one was like it, the patching and the upgrade of these different components, right? So this is something that we have addressed with SDC Manager. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll give you an example. It can be extremely complex uh, for customers who are using vSphere, NSX, vCenter, you know, from the, the design, the, uh, the architecture, the design from, uh, in the very beginning to actually deploying these, uh, these add-on components, layering the software on top, and then when it comes to, to patching these, these, these solutions, right, a lot of work goes into checking the compatibility of, diff of these products with each other or interdependencies on each other, right, different versions what works with what, right? This was a very time-consuming uh, thing for our customers. We have addressed that in SDDC Manager where you will be able to download one set of, uh, you know, uh, uh, one set of, uh, uh, how should I say, one set of 
patches from both IBM and VMware, and these will be given to our customers. You know, uh, they can actually launch this in in one shot, right? Uh, you, you don't have to go and individually check every product, check the interdependencies of these products. You just don't know one one. Uh, we call this uh, the. Let me just go here to display the process. Uh, go back quickly. Yeah. So, so the VMware change control, the IBM change control, we our R and Ds will basically work together to create the patches, both for the hardware stack and the software stack, the SDC binaries. Uh, and then you will deliver these patches as a bundle, right? And then these can be deployed on the software cloud and the on-premise cloud in one shot, right? And, and there's no disruption. Uh, as much of as much as possible, we will keep a spare host because that's what we have aimed for. We want to make patching and upgrade a very simple process. Uh, there will be at any given time spare host in case you need to roll back uh, the deployment of patches. Uh, so. Uh, the, that host will be there. The, the actual, the actual deployment of the software component itself will be online for most part of it, right? And when any component needs to be taken offline, that particular VM will be re motioned to another host, uh, in the either the on-premise cloud or the IBM cloud. So this is something that is the primary driver behind creating this uh, cloud foundation bundle and the SDDC manager, right? So in future, you will see that you know uh, uh, very soon you, this will be available to uh, you know uh, also like most of our on-premise partners, like the regular hardware suppliers, uh, they will be coming up with these on-premise bundles uh, which are certified to run on their hardware stack, and you will be able to simply take the hardware the hardware converting infrastructure from them with Cloud Foundation on top. And then run the same cloud foundation in IBM Cloud. So how is this being done on the IBM Cloud itself? At present, you know, right now, uh, you have the IBM Cloud driver, which is talking to the SDGC driver, and the SDGC manager is basically going and deploying these services on the cloud. It's it's not important for you to know this thing, but I just thought I'll put it here so that you at least you know like how we are doing this. Uh, once you have deployed very, I'll not spend too much time on this. Uh, it's a bit more technical and you know the details of what happens. Uh, I'll ch show you the end result. Once you have uh, clicked uh, or sort of requested the uh, Cloud Foundation IBM Cloud, essentially what you're getting is a fully functional uh, uh, cluster, which is a vSphere, DRS, high availability, ready uh, vSAN cluster. It's running across four hosts by default. Uh, expandable to 32 and in future 64 nodes. Uh, there is the SDDC manager here. You have the vCenter that you know already. There's a platform services controller. There's an NSX uh, piece here, NSX manager and NSX uh, controllers, the three nodes. And then obviously the, the tenant workloads. So there's a tenant resource pool for all the uh, workloads that, that you know the applications are, that are, the tenants will run. So this is what essentially what you will get at the end of this deployment. You will have two public-facing IP addresses, and then you will have the extension of the NSX from your on-premise to this in a private network. Uh, of course, you can bring your own uh, IP addresses. So this is one of the other advantages. You don't have to change if you have any applications uh, require certain IP addresses. You don't have to change them. You can keep maintain the same IP addressing scheme even the IBM public cloud, right? And the way we do it, we do it with uh, L2 or L3 stretch networks uh, uh, with NSX. All you would need is some kind of MPLS connectivity or IPsec tunnel or, or direct, uh, direct connect. So the end result for our customers would be you know, something that they're very familiar with. They, are, uh, uh, they would open up the vCenter server and then they would be seeing their own on-premise uh, data center cluster. But in addition to that, they will also see the IBM data center. For example, here we have a, a cluster a host in Amsterdam and one in Dallas and then have another one in Dallas uh, and in Sydney. So this is this is the true hybrid model that we have been working you know for for many years now, and I think finally we've achieved it with with IBM you know in partnership with IBM that our customers can now manage their on-premise and off-premise seamlessly through the vCenter console that they're so used to. Any any questions so far on this? If not, then uh, you know I have uh, some more detailed uh, uh, architecture design. 
you know, so should I go and go on with this? Of course. Okay, just to sort of tell you, I mean, uh, I'm sure there are a few people on this, you know, uh, on this uh, session today who might want to know what we are actually doing, right? So I have a few minutes, so what I'm going to do is just tell you what we are doing, right? There is the, uh, there's obviously the underlying network uh, that is there for, you know, there's the there's software backbone, there's a network point presence in, you know, in, in, in the country that you are, and then there's software directly, uh, software engineering, and then there's the, the customer on premise equipment, right? So this is what we call the underlay, underlay uh, network. Now, the only thing that from our perspective, what we care about is latency here, right? And the bandwidth. Uh, none of the other, uh, none, none, nothing in the architecture, anything else matters to us very much because uh, we don't care about the routed network underneath. Uh, we don't care about the how you get from you know from your on-premise to your your uh, uh, cloud data center, whether you go through MPLS network or some sort of direct connect. It doesn't matter to us, right? We care about just connectivity, a point-to-point -point connectivity, latency, and bandwidth. What we in, what we do on top of this physical network, right, is that of course, uh, like any ESXi uh, you know uh, administrator, VC administrator would know that there is a management network, there's a vMotion uh, network, there's you know there backup network, et cetera. These are the VLANs, the traditional, uh, you know, on any ESXi host. What we do on top of this is that we create an overlay network, right? The overlay network is basically uh, given to us by NSX. It's basically layer two or layer three. So in, uh, in essence, what we do is we create our own network between the on-premise data center and off-premise data center, which is IBM Cloud. So we can maintain the same IP address in scheme. Uh, we can have, in fact, the same VLAN spanning across the the, uh, the data centers, uh, you know. And this overlay network is uh, in, it, it is uh, using the VXLAN protocol. Uh, the reason uh, we use this is because uh, the underlay network is completely unaware of this overlay network. The all the the routing and switching that we have in place. Uh, at the present will not even know that such an overlay network is, is existing in your data center and that you are running an overlay protocol on top of this and communication, right? This allows us to do things like vMotion. Uh, this allows us to do things like SRM very easily. And uh, this allows us to you know, move a VM from uh, on-premise to off-premise without changing the IP addresses, for example. Uh, this gives us a lot of uh, fun. We don't need to do dynamic DNS updates, for example. So this, this gives us a large advantage. In addition to that, it gives us more security capabilities as well. It gives us micro-segmentation. For every workload that you have in your on-premise and off-premise cloud, you will get micro-segmentation. Every workload is protected by its own firewall. So these are just some of the, the capabilities that you know, we can offer uh, as part of the solution. Is there a question here? Yes, we have seven questions. Okay. Um, we can start with how does vMotion work between on-prem and the software? Doesn't the storage need to be shared between the hosts? Yeah, so that is okay. So, so this is the this is the part of the uh, the cloud foundation, right? So, the cloud foundation is the architecture that we have created, uh, you know, with VMware. Uh, with, with VMware R&D and IBM together, right? It's a specific uh, set of hardware that we're using, you know, inside the uh, IBM uh, uh, stack in the in the in the, uh, in the uh, software, okay? And vMotion will we will look at the compatibility matrix. The customer obviously when they deploy the cloud foundation on the on-premise uh, data center, okay, we will look at the compatibility of that as well. And this is what is going to enable the vMotion. And this is not the vMotion that you see, uh, the traditional vMotion that you see today. This is the enhanced version of vMotion that you will see is basically based on uh, non shared storage, obviously, because it's going to be across uh, data centers, across continents in this case. And it's going to, it's going to underneath it, it's going to uh, uh, utilize the VMware replication technology. Yes, this is for cloud foundation uh, deployment. Yeah. But of course, if you, if you, for example, would like to deploy like a vCenter based uh, uh, architecture, uh, there is a there is a iSCSI SAN storage available from SoftLayer with That's a guaranteed different. with a guaranteed performance, and you can use it. So you can basically um, you can you can you can pick and choose the right uh, storage performance wise, and you can basically uh, create VMFS uh, volume. 
on uh, using this SAN story. So there are two ways, I would yeah. say. The more innovative one is through the Cloud uh, Foundation platform, just because it will fully uh, it will manage your environment from a VMware console in a fully automated way. So you don't even need to, 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 to log into a yeah, so VM that, console to deploy it, right? Yeah, the, uh, if, you, if, if, we, if we build a tradi traditional environments like using a, a soft, uh, using a licensed components like ESX, vCenter, and, and NSX, and the others, then there is a, always an option uh, to use, uh, to use a, a, a storage area network provided as a service from software catalog. Yeah, so uh, this is that the, in the past we had to shut down the VMs and, and replicate them. This addition we made with vMotion, and this is really kind of putting us, you know, ahead of our competition that we can take a running VM and move it across uh, to a different data center. The only catch here is the latency, because uh, we have enhanced the the vMotion uh, can now take uh, uh, it was previously 10 milliseconds latency, so that meant that we really could not go beyond uh, yeah. you know, a metro yeah. kind of cluster. But in this case, we can go across continents now. Yeah, we can go across continents. And what's, what's very important to mention uh, in uh, when we consider the motion inside the data center, inside the software data center, we are, the, we are I think, the only one cloud provider who, who offers 10 GB uplinks from yes. the servers on the private network, right? So you can use, uh, you can connect to uh, SAN storage on the cloud using 10 GB uplinks which are fully dedicated to you. You can also uh, connect servers uh, together using 10 GB uplinks, uh, which can greatly enhance your, your replication capabilities. Just because, just to remind you, on a multi-tenant environment uh, with the other vendors like Azure and AWS, uh, there is one gigabit uplink, which is physically, uh, which is, sorry, logically divided into uh, private and public networks, uh, and also uh, accessible for for the, the other neighbors, I mean noisy neighbors, I mean the other customers using the same, uh, the same hypervisor. So uh, I would say the performance of the network uh, with the other public cloud providers uh, is a big difference and uh, compared to what software can offer you. So I think there's one question here says, uh, do we need to deploy NSX on, uh, is NSX required on, uh, in this case for successful setup on-premise? Uh, yes. Uh, if you want to if you want to uh, do a layer two stretch networks, uh, then you would have to deploy it on premise as well, uh, as well as in the IBM cloud. All right. The last one says, uh, how is the VMware powered power private cloud on IBM different from the VMware powered private cloud on Rackspace, for instance? So the Rackspace solution is uh, okay. So the Rackspace solution is by Rackspace itself. Uh, they have. Taken, it's a fully managed solution. It's a fully managed solution, and it's uh, although they're using our, our software to enable, uh, they're using uh, they're using multiple solutions. So one of them is vSphere, that is KVM. So uh, they're using our technology, but VMware is not part of that. Uh, you know, they, uh, we are not part of that uh, cloud, as okay. so to speak, right? Let me let yeah. me let me explain you a bit more, just because I had a pleasure to work for Rexpace before. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as a solution architect, so. So first of all, Rackspace offer a fully managed solution, which is not a very good, uh, uh, which which doesn't make the solutions from Rackspace a, a very very good shape for for the partners. Just because the way partners make their own money is by providing and manage additional services on top of infrastructure stuff, right? So first of all, commercially it might be not not really 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 good solution for you. The second of all, VMware has a sorry, Rackspace has a lot of limitation regarding releases, right? So. I'm not sure if, if, if currently you can see that uh, the ESX versions available from VMware uh, have, a, have, a, have a most recent re, uh, uh, VMware release uh, version. I think it might be slightly delayed, and this, uh, this was always a challenge with, uh, with, with Rackspace. Plus, of course, uh, you cannot manage this fully flexible way. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's uh, from this perspective, it's not like a fully dedicated environment for you and your customers. So you don't have a full control over this solution. Okay, I'm just reaching the end now. So uh, the uh, I would I would just stress on the fact that you know uh, once you have deployed the software in IBM Cloud, 
then the entire VMware portfolio is open to you, right? Uh, today we have the you know the VDI solution, the NSX micro segmentation based solution, the DevOps ready, the VIC container based applications, microservices. Uh, there's a new use case for IT automating IT. Uh, we, you can use our operations manager. Uh, you can add that. That's available in the catalog. Log Insight, uh, you know, Horizon, our end user computing portfolio. Uh, VIO is an integrated OpenStack. A lot of our customers who want to, you know, onboard OpenStack uh, but don't really know how to go about it, right? So there's that VIO available today. So, and basically, you can put the entire VRS suite on top of this uh, Cloud Foundation. So uh, I would say there's nothing in our catalog which is n which you cannot use on top of the IBM you know, cloud. Uh, pretty much everything. Once you have deployed the Cloud Foundation underneath, you can do anything on do in your on-premise data center. Uh, think of it as just another, just one more data center, your data center in the cloud, right? Uh, I've put two links here which I think are very important. I, you should make a note of these links. Uh, you should go down and visit these uh, these documents. Uh, I, these are on IBM website. Uh, the corresponding one are on, on VMware website as well. Uh, this will explain to you in detail what this uh, reference architecture looks like that we are deploying as part of the Cloud Foundation, right? Uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, hundreds of hours of effort has been put into coming up with these validated architectures. So we are working with Intel, uh, Supermicro, IBM, the storage providers that we are using underneath the software stack, the entire software stack, right? We have we have validated every component to work with the other component, right? So that there are no surprises when you go and you know you you run your uh, workloads in this uh, public cloud. So this is the advantage of of the uh, of the architecture, and you can then replicate the same architecture in your own data center as well. So please go ahead and you know visit these two links, uh, download the documents. And uh, if there are any questions, you can always you know get back to us, and we are happy to. This is a very high-level uh, uh, overview of the offering. Uh, there's a lot to be said about the different use cases, and you know the exact uh, how they'll be deployed, what the exact architecture might look like depending on your own on-premise uh, setup. All right. So before we close the session, we can yeah. quickly run over the poll questions. Yeah. Uh, it says, are your customers working on data center automation? Yeah, and... Uh, the answer now? Yes. Okay. The poll is in progress. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, there's so much going on in this window that I can't see. <laughs> All right. We have 50% saying yes. 67% person. Very Three person now. Okay, so we <coughs> we want to talk to the sixty seven percent, and the other thirty twenty five percent we want to know why they. <laughs> All right. Quickly, we move on to the next one. Do you have customers for on prem or IES? Infrastructure as a service. They do. Hundred percent yes. yes. Wow. Good. That's a response for you. <laughs> so may everybody has an automation project. Great. Moving on to the next one. Are you working with hybrid cloud? If yes, you can select from the options below. Fifty percent, twenty percent, no. So hybrid is no. So we have forty saying no and forty saying disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that might be a, a major case. Yeah. Okay. As we talked, as we sort of expect. Yeah. yeah. This is actually confirmation on yes. what we what we discuss in currently with our customers. Right. If there, if, so if there are no more questions from uh, from me from VMware, then uh, I'll sign off and hand over to my host now. All right. So I hope we are done with the questions. And thank you, Zahur and Greg, for giving us valuable insights on the partnership with IBM and VMware. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, one important announcement that we want to make is that uh, we have uh, IBM 
uh, as a gold sponsor for an event coming up uh, next month uh, in November. Uh, we're going to organize this at the Atlantis in Dubai. It's on the 14th of November. Uh, after this call, you will receive uh, uh, an invitation for it. Please fill in all of your uh, details on the registration form so that we can evaluate uh, inviting you for that event. Uh, it's a club. It's, uh, you will have the opportunity to interact with uh, leadership team members from across uh, different uh, uh, countries and uh, there's going to be keynote sessions, panel discussions and a lot of breakout sessions as well. So uh, that's, that's for uh, more interaction on the Cloud Summit but uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, I'll just hand over to Rajwinder for a closing note. Yes, before we do that, we have one last question saying, is there a gateway to connect them or is it via software? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I mean, uh, as Zahur mentioned and uh, on, the, on the slides prepared uh, by Zahur, you can, uh, you can see that there are uh, various options of, of, uh, for the connectivity. Yeah? So for the customers willing to pay premium, we can create like a dedicated instances, uh, firewall instances in high availability mode and then set up like a firewalls. Uh, standard IPsec to tunnels or even uh, or even use direct link or pop extensions with our telco provider from Equinix in in Dubai to get the customer connected right but of course there are also like uh, uh, gateways uh, gateways available uh, uh, from a software as a sta in a standard mode which are more like a multi-tenant solutions uh, but uh, can 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 offer you like an easy IPsec uh, tunneling option without additional configuration, without, uh, let's say, a, a firewall, uh, dedic a dedicated firewall uh, layer. So the answer is uh, yes, there is a gateway, but you have, uh, you have also a, a dedicated options. So you can, uh, so can complement the customer and build, for example, a, a high available firewall cluster for the customer using Brocade solutions and, and connect them uh, using your own dedicated one. All right, thanks, Greg. So we will close the session for today, and thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you, Zahur and Greg, once again. Yeah, it's been a great pleasure for us to, 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 to make this presentation for you. Uh, I think we'll have more announcements in the future, so hopefully we're going to meet uh, with each other uh, pretty, far, pretty, pretty much soon. Thank you very much for your time today.